Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Dr. Hovanessian, who is here with Harvard Eye. Well, doctor, so nice to see you again. You always have great information for us. It's terrific to see you too. Hope you're doing well. And uh, and yeah, there, there's always something new in eye care, isn't there? <laughs> well, no, and, I, and, and, and thank goodness, right? Because we don't want to wait around for, especially now that I'm in a certain age group. It's like, good. <laughs> you just don't look like you're part of that. You don't look like you're part of that age group, even if you are. You, know, you never know. We're, we're just going to say it like that. But yeah, we're always looking for the latest and greatest technology with our eyes. And so you've got something that everyone is definitely going to want to learn about. So tell me what it is and how it will affect uh, our community. Well, you're so right that, that things are changing all the time. Um, and we don't want to wait. This is a technology that we've been waiting for since well, let me just say, since I had hair. Uh, <laughs> uh, truly, this has been in development for over 20 years, and it is very exciting for us to have it because the light adjustable lens represents a completely new kind of way of thinking about cataract surgery, which is the most common surgery we perform. Um, most of our viewers probably know that Cataract surgery involves taking the eye after it's had a few birthdays and it's developed cloudiness inside the internal lens of the eye and replacing that lens with an artificial implant that never gets old. It lasts as long as the patient does. Well, one of the, the basic premises of cataract surgery has always been that we measure the eye before surgery uh, and sometimes during surgery to decide what lens implant is going to be the right fit. Uh, and then we put the implant inside the eye and then it settles a little bit and there can be a tiny bit of adjustment in the way it focuses. It's a little bit like measuring yourself for a pair of shoes with that Brannock device that tells you what size you want, but you really have to try on the shoe. But with lens implants, we don't have a chance to, uh, to, uh, to try them on. We put one in and that's it. What's interesting about the light adjustable lens and completely different is its focus can be adjusted inside the eye mm -hmm. after surgery. Well, so after. after surgery. So it is adjustable after surgery. And that, that is a, a real mind bender. So how do we do this? Well, we use light to adjust the lens, thus the name. So what happens is that uh, patients come in and have really cataract surgery, just like we've performed for years. And this lens implant doesn't look any different. It doesn't go in the eye any differently. It just has a special lens material, similar to other lenses. It's the most safe and proven lens material on the planet, silicone. Uh, and But this silicone has a polymer that's been tested and proven to be very safe and effective at being adjustable. So the patient goes through surgery and um, uh, over the couple of weeks after surgery, we can measure the eye to determine where and how that lens has settled and then perform treatments in the office with a simple device that shines a light on the lens to adjust its power. And usually there are two or three adjustments and a fairly wide range we can make adjustments so that we can fine tune the vision. Um, isn't that interesting? Well, so so what is the technology behind that if you've got, if you're just using a light? I mean, what you have a, a special light that you're shining in the eye? Yes. So it's not a flashlight or a handheld light. It's a very precise machine that looks like the equipment we use to examine the eye. So the patient, it's not surgical procedure. It's a, it's a light treatment um, that is very precisely focuses the light on parts of the lens. So the lens has a polymer in it that is reactive to the light. So when the light touches or hits a certain part of the lens, it causes the, the silicone um, molecules to aggregate around that area, which thickens the lens slightly locally in that area. That means that depending on which part of the lens we treat with the light, we can make adjustments to make the patient more nearsighted, more farsighted, we can correct astigmatism as well. So we can fine tune the prescription far better than we could before. Wow, and that's, this is, that's great. And this is particularly important uh, for, pe for certain people. First of all, those who wanna have a really precise result. Um, so, uh, you know, th think about this in terms of improving the precision of surgery. So when you're, uh, you know, if you have a target that you're trying to hit the center of, 
uh, there's a certain plus or minus with any technology. Greater accuracy means that a greater percentage of our efforts are going to land us right in the bullseye, and that's what we want with cataract surgery. Here we have higher accuracy than we've ever had with any other technology. Um, and what it translates to for patients is more clear vision. Um, so, you know, most of our patients are very happy with cataract surgery before the light adjustable lens, but our patients are always asking for the very best we can give them. And, and that's what this is. It gives us a, a range of vision or a correction of vision that can be that much more precise. So there's less need for glasses. And so the people this fits for are number one, people who really want that extra degree of correction. Um, people who've had prior refractive surgery. If you've had LASIK or PRK in the past, it's harder for us with traditional surgery to exactly target because the eye is not quite predictable. Well, now we have better predictability. It's also good for people who have certain conditions of the cornea uh, or elsewhere in the eye that make it harder to precisely target uh, our, our cataract surgery outcomes. So it's a very exciting treatment. Uh, one interesting thing about it is that patients do have to wear, after surgery, a pair of clear, and there's also shaded aversion, glasses that protect the eye from ambient light. Because if you were to go out on a very bright day without having these protective lenses, what would happen is the bright light you're exposed to, it wouldn't change the lens, but it would lock in the prescription that the patient has, and so it would lose its adjustability. So for just those couple of weeks after surgery, during waking hours, we ask patients to wear these special glasses and they're not terrible looking, uh, but they protect the eye from light and people can shower without them and, and you know, do certain things without. But most of the time during waking hours, whether they're outside or in, we ask them to wear them so that we maintain that adjustability of their lens. And then once the final adjustment and lock-in is done, those glasses can go away and they can wear whatever cool shades they want to wear or no glasses at all. So they have, uh, and they, there's no greater need for sunglasses with this light adjustable lens than there is with any lens implant. Uh, the eye is back to normal once the adjustments are finished. So why wouldn't you move to this type of uh, correction all the time? Well, you know, two reasons for that. First, there's a cost and uh, unfortunately insurance covers cataract surgery, the big costs, but not the cost of special implants like this. It's considered a optional uh, thing for patients. Second, uh, the light adjustable lens does not yet have multifocal uh, options. And so for patients who want certain choices in their surgery, we advise you just to talk to your surgeon, ask what, you know, describe what you want. We, we spend a lot of effort understanding what our patients want so we can make a recommendation. For many of them, the light adjustable lens is an appropriate choice, but it's not for everyone. Okay. And so that's really something that we decide through discussion. Okay, isn't it always the case, something cool comes out that everyone will love and insurance doesn't cover it? <laughs> um, you know, and it's unfortunate because we hate to have that conversation. We wish everything were covered so every patient could be entitled to the best technology. Uh, but it is the truth of the future of medicine is some of the better exciting technology insurance is opting out of. So yeah, that's a reality that we all face. Uh, that's too bad because you know what, in the long run, they might save money because you won't have to readjust or fix. It would just be done and you wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. But hey, we're yeah. not the insurance company, right? Yeah. And <laughs> to put a finer that. point on that, you know, people as we get older, one of the things that we really wish to avoid is falling down. We lose independence when we fall. Well, it turns out almost half of falls in older people are caused by progressive or bifocal eyeglasses causing them to miss a step. And so if you can lessen your need for glasses when you go through cataract surgery, you actually significantly reduce your risk of a future fall that could take, you, uh, take away your independence. So it's not just vanity that drives this, it's also safety. Oh, good. Now I would imagine the manufacturers do try to meet with insurance companies. I mean, how does that actually work when something new like this comes out? Well, um, you know, it, it fits into a category of product. So what happened is way back in 2003, um, the uh, Medicare made the decision that implants designed to, you know, that, that are sort of the fancy implants designed to correct vision would be 
allowed for cataract patients because previously Medicare patients couldn't even receive them. Uh, they were allowed, but the extra cost of the lens was not going to be paid by Medicare, that it would be a patient choice matter. And so they don't have to read, you know, decide this on each new technology. This lens, like so many others, falls into that category where the patient has the choice to pay for it. Um, and, and, you know, of all, we want patients to receive what is best for them. We're not, we don't have a, a vested interest in them choosing one over the, over the other. But we encourage patients to understand their choices and make the choice that's right for them because there is probably no object you will ever own in your life that you will use as much as the lens implant that we put in the eye during cataract surgery. You literally look through it every waking moment for the rest of your life. And so having one that is right for you, whether that's a basic implant or the most advanced offering we have today, it doesn't matter to us so much as it really matters to our patients. And so we try to spend the time helping them learn so they can make a choice that they're comfortable with. And, that, and very well said, because you just, you obviously can't change what, what is covered and not covered, but you can make the choice that's best for you. So that, that was very well said. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much. I mean, technology is awesome. I always love to learn about new stuff. And uh, I'm glad that you guys have that available for our patient, for the patient. And we have plenty of technology. So it's a pleasure seeing you. And thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, nice to share this with you today. All right. Thank you again. We'll talk to you again. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. And we'll be right back after this.